the better pick. I have been with my wife who I love dearly for eight years and married for four. I have treated her well, given her so much love and support. She is a recovering anorexic and this has caused a few issues with her fertility which has meant that we have failed in getting her pregnant for the past two years. A process that has hurt her dearly and I as best as I can have supported her at the most difficult times. I've always said if it happens then it happens. My way of informing her that no matter what you're not to blame and regardless baby or not then I'm always here for you. As man and wife. My story is that after much suspicion she revealed to me that she had been meeting a 53-year-old male colleague. She is 29 going on walks and talking about life and their issues. He has told my wife that he is separated and not living with his ex. After speaking to his wife and informed that they are still living together and married. Oh, and he has previously been divorced also. He has also to the point told my wife that he has an eating disorder which is also a lie. My reaction when told was that I want a divorce so I avoided contact and went to my parents. I am so broken and hurt I cannot explain. I came back after a few days and we had moved forward so much but I never did feel that I got that reassurance. So, I stupidly would check her handbag from time to time to see what I could find. Once followed her but then immediately turn around which she saw me do. My question is although she tells me that she hasn't slept with this guy or she doesn't have feelings for him she is now saying that we can't ever move forward as I will never fully trust her again. She is now saying we should think about selling our flat and possibly get divorced. How can she be so cold when at first, she was the one begging for my forgiveness and wanting me back? She won't consider counseling because of her memories of the anorexia meetings. What should my next step be? Should I let her buy me out the flat? Should I file for divorce? Wife is cheating. So, it's been revealed that not only has my wife been cheating on me but it turns out she is also now carrying his baby. She is 29 and he is 51 previously married and divorced and now divorcing a second time. Luckily, we don't have any children involved. I need advice on what I should do next. Should I allow her to buy me out of the flat because she earns more than me? Or do I insist on selling the flat? We have equally put in the same amount throughout our seven years together. What's the right thing to do? Should I leave and let her stay whilst we work out what we will do? I am so truly heartbroken and have been betrayed in the worst possible way. How soon should I file for divorce? So, the guy is a work colleague of hers. She's 29 and he's 51. He's someone who gave her attention. And like an idiot she fell for it. We've always had a good relationship. No real arguments. The physical life was good. The real issue was that she couldn't fall pregnant. She found out after tests that she had fertility issues which resulted in her needing operations. I came home and knew something wasn't right. I found that she had been putting red food gel into her sanitary towels to make it look like she was having periods. And then I opened a letter which had a maternity exemption card inside. What more proof did I need? I am so lost and broken. I do not know how she could have unprotected affair with this guy knowing that we had been trying for so long. How dare she? I need to know what steps I should take next. I do not feel that she should get to buy me out of my flat and live untouched. Should I tell the guy's wife? Should I just pack up and go? It appears that her being pregnant with someone else's baby wasn't enough to break my heart. But now she's rubbing it in by buying bio oil to reduce stretch marks and leaving it clearly visible. I need some advice. I'm currently still living with her in our two-bedroom flat. She is adamant that she is going to buy me out as I can't afford to buy her out due to how much I earn. I just see this as being very unfair. She is the one that has messed up and not only am I losing my wife but I'm also losing my wife. My questions are should I allow her to buy me out and just let her get on with it? I'll get 33000 if she brought me out or possibly 27000 if we sold, depending on what the property sells for. I'm going to file for divorce which is something I really don't want to do, but feel like I have no choice now. I'm also going to move out Tuesday without telling her. What can I entitle to take? I mean at my parents I won't have a bed or a TV. Can I really take this from our home and leave her without? I honestly feel like my life is not worth living. She is my wife, best friend, soulmate and I just feel so empty. And this also sounds very childish but I want her to feel some suffering somehow. Make her understand that what she has done is not acceptable. See her life affected somehow. Any ideas? I told his wife and she was so so nice. She had no idea. I asked my wife if it was his and she blurted out well it's not yours. We haven't had slept together since November so it's a given in my eyes. How can people be so self-centered? I've decided that I'm going to let my wife buy me out of our property. And I plan to up and leave Tuesday without her knowing. The hardest decision that I have ever had to make. I'm thinking it will be amicable this way and it will also reduce costs by not having to use a solicitor. I also feel like I'm doing the wrong thing but I just know being there with her is killing me. I plan to take our only TV in bed and she can have everything else. Is this wrong of me? Views and opinions are greatly appreciating in what is a very dark time in my life. Update. So, I sent off for my divorce today. Felt so strange doing that. But now it's been revealed that not only has she changed the locks on our jointly owned property but now he has bloody moved in. I mean the cheek of it. My solicitor has said unless I intend to move back and then there is no point in fighting at court about the locks. 
How dare they be so crude and self-centered? I am not comfortable with this is all. How can I burst their little bubble? I've been questioning whether I should reveal their affair to friends and colleagues. But I really don't wish to cause any issues when sorting out the equity settlement when she buys me out. What should be my next move? Smile and continue to try and move on with my life leaving them to it. Or is there another thing I should be doing? She is now pregnant with his baby. As a result of this I had no choice but to leave the marital home which we jointly own as seeing her starting to show became unbearable. This has been a ridiculously testing time in my life. To know that she has changed the locks and has moved on so quickly with him staying over according to our neighbor. I am so low and often feel like I don't want to be here anymore and then other times I'm absolutely fine. I feel like I should be reacting by showing my anger and getting revenge but no this will not make matters any easier. I just hate the idea that my wife who I trusted with all my life is now living a life three weeks after separating with a different guy. Not to mention his history or age. It doesn't make matters any easier when I travel to where we live together each day for work. My question is what can I do to make myself get over this? Should I get revenge? Has anyone had experiences like this? Why should he be all comfortable and untouched? I hope in time I can become stronger. But right now, I feel very embarrassed and depressed. A quick update on my situation. So, for those who don't know my 31-year-old wife cheated on me with a 51-year-old coworker currently going through his second divorce after I revealed all to her. Not only that I've now been informed that she is carrying his baby. This is the most hurtful thing possible as she has had several fertility operations in order to conceive with me and I've even had tests myself. So, I have filed for divorce and have since moved back in with my parents for the foreseeable future, which is rather depressing when residing back in my childhood room. On a daily basis I think about her and on some days, I feel extremely low, to the point where I feel nothing would be easier than taking my own life. I have a great social circle and family who have supported me tremendously. I had just hoped that by now I would start to feel better. So, the divorce has been sent to my cheating wife. I am awaiting a settlement for our flat which seems like she has forgotten about. Which I really hope is dealt with sooner rather than later as she has now changed the locks. For me it's a case that I have lost everything. With no signs or warnings that she was unhappy. And I still don't have a reason. I've lost my wife, my flat and yet I'm expected to carry on like everything is normal. I still commute to the town we lived in for work and even with that I'm considering on transferring to another town purely to avoid seeing her in the street showing signs of a pregnancy bump. I have started to attend church which has been great. I just want to feel normal again. I feel lost and so deeply hurt. All the time thinking I should not give them an easy ride. In time I will be fine I know that and I hope anyone who is in a relationship will never experience what I am. Three years later, I was with my ex for nine years and married for three until I found out she had an affair and fell pregnant with his child. I divorced her three years ago now and went through so many dark days to overcome the hurt and rejection I felt. She reached out back in January this year but I ignored her. Eventually in March I took the courage to meet up with her. We have spent quite a bit of time together and I have also on many times spent time with her child from the affair that broke our marriage. She has asked that we take things slow for the sake of her child as she feels she doesn't want to introduce a new guy to her child if I then decided not to be a part of her life. She has said I am and always have been the one for her. She would message me daily. Long story short we slept together for the first time since our breakup Wednesday evening when she asked me to stay the night. The night itself was great. Plenty of laughing and we genuinely enjoyed each other's company. I left the next morning and when I got home, I texted to say I enjoyed spending time with her and said thanks for inviting me over. She replied with I really enjoyed spending time with you also and thanks for coming over. I haven't messaged her since. I think because I didn't want to look too keen or look needy. I was hoping she would message me but she hasn't for three days now. She seemed a little tentative in bed and even said sorry but I haven't been this close with anyone in 18 months. Should I cut my losses? Is she still into the kid's dad? The father pays maintenance and has the child once a week. He sometimes randomly turns up at her place to see his child which I know frustrates her. I'm just not sure why she hasn't contacted me since. Very unusual considering she would message me daily. Since the night we spent together I messaged her and she did reply but I just haven't messaged her since. I figured I would give her some space considering she did say she wanted to take things slowly. I was in such a good place and I genuinely felt happy. The last few days my mind has been going crazy. We were both 30 when she did cheat. And she is now living in her own place and is financially stable as she works full time and earns a really good living. I guess she wanted to take things slow and I was happy to do that. But inviting me to stay the night and sleeping with me has suggested she is serious about giving this a go. I just wonder whether me not contacting her is making her think I'm not interested. It turns out that as soon as she fell pregnant, he didn't want to be with her. The other guy was actually married as well. I broke the affair to his wife and I then found out it was actually his second divorce. The guy apparently has never been around to interact with the kid or even bath the child. All of a sudden because they no longer live together, he can't get involved enough. 
When I was round hers just the other day, I said oh you don't have a mirror in here. She said no my dad won't hang it as there are pips behind the wall. She said it's fine though because the boy's dad said he would sort it. That really annoyed me. I wonder if she's not contacted me because she's realized she still wants the other guy. Either way I've decided not to contact her and just let it be. So, we've actually been meeting up since June. A hand on heart can honestly say the fact that she has a child with the other guy doesn't bother me. As long as boundaries are set and we are clear as to what they are. In regard to sleeping with me I'm sure it wasn't her intentions. She was a little reserved and I definitely initiated for it to happen. It's certainly a tough one because she has even asked me whether I would want to remarry one day. She's asked when and if I would want a child with her if things were going well. Part of me wants to give it a chance but I also know I'm likely to get burnt again. I've decided to reach out and contact her via message but I'm struggling with words. Am I wasting my time? Most likely. Very strange for her to not reach out but then again, the same applies to me. I could have contacted her. At least if I don't get a response I know where I stand and I can officially close that chapter in my life. Life is too short to dwell on the past. So, I decided to reach out and sent this message. I want you to know that for the past six days I have not stopped thinking about you. Every minute of every day you're on my mind. I'm an idiot with good intentions who hoped you would contact me when you were ready. Just know that I miss having you in my life. Let's see if she responds. If she doesn't then I know where I stand. It took me a lot to let her back into my life. So, she certainly won't get the opportunity again in the future if it doesn't work out this time. My comment, a recap. She denied you bonding for months while having an affair. She got pregnant from a co-worker 20 plus years her senior, after you and her failed to get pregnant after two years of trying. She is a liar extraordinaire, putting red dye in pads to make you think she had her period while she was pregnant. Once you found out she threw it in your face by putting on stretch mark oil for you to see, changed the locks on your house and moved in her OM. Now three years later she phones you up for a booty call and you oblige, then basically tell her here that you are in love with her. This is harsh, but you are the best doormat I've ever seen here. How can you allow yourself to be treated like this? Have you had any other relationships since your divorce? For that matter, have you had any long-term relationships other than your XW? All your message to her did was broadcast clearly that you are ready, willing, and able to be a doormat for her and to allow her to take advantage of you in any way she wants. OP responded with her response to the text. I'll be honest with you I was pretty disgusted when you didn't reply to me and I didn't hear from you after you stayed the night at my place last Tuesday. She did as I messaged the morning after and she replied. I'm not into playing games and that's what it is with you, a game to see how I react or respond. It's given me some time to think about what I want and I don't have any space in my life for anyone other than my son right now. Finally, I can now see her for her true colors. I don't think I can articulate quite how angry I am. You sleep with me and then don't contact me for almost a week and now suddenly I'm the bad guy and getting it from your family. I will speak with you soon. Random message from her to me. My sister told her to quit playing games. Ouch. But seriously what the hell. After I finalized the divorce, I stayed single for about a year and a half. I needed to be in a good place before dating again. Nothing materialized more than just casual dating and bonding. The ex has for the past two years. Messaged on birthdays and Xmas. But in maybe Feb this year she started messaging asking how I was. How work was. To create a conversation. I ignored these and didn't respond until I finally did in June. And then annoyingly it sent sparks flying. I have now blocked her on all methods. It's tough having someone deceive you like she has. But time to put on my big boy pants. My sister sent her a message her telling her she is a nasty piece of work and that she should stay out of my life. I was completely unaware. Anyway, I woke up this morning to this message from her. Do you not see that your sister sending me that message the other day is incredibly immature on all of your parts? I do not want a relationship with your family, just with you. My comment, thoughts, block her. My thoughts are that you are still giving her centrality in your life and that you are digging all this mayhem and family drama. Do you know who digs mayhem and family drama? Chicks, you're acting just like a chick wondering if someone likes you and stirring up crap in the family because you dig the drama. Meanwhile men are turning off their phones, sitting in the deer stand and can't be bothered with all this junior high BS and background noise. Every time you reply, you are perpetuating all this drama and chaos and you obviously get off on it. Enjoy your train wreck life. Story 2 I think I need some perspective. I have been married for almost 20 years, together or almost 25, two teenage children and a generally happy home. The last couple of years have been a bit of a roller coaster. We have had some financial difficulties, a lot of it was my fault and I own that. I am not always the most effective communicator and have a tendency to just take care of things. I am the primary earner. There was a long time I treated my husband more like a third child than a partner. For his part, he was all for it. He was the baby of the family and used to that kind of treatment. Add to that he has a somewhat addictive personality. He has never been one to drink heavily or do drugs or even gamble, but he does tend to get hooked on things. 
What partly led to the initial financial difficulties was his wanting to continually add to an existing business or start a new one. He would never take no for an answer so I tried to make it happen. It caused a lot of stress and resentment and we have since tried to work through all of that and the codependent situation that set it off. We are still dealing with some of the aftermath but overall are improving in the finance area. I say he has an addictive personality because once we curbed the spending, he became obsessed with bonding. He has a workmate who is and my husband is very much a follower. They often work alone so it is easy for them to talk about it. Over a couple months, every conversation he had with me became about it, especially when he was traveling for work. Every statement was somehow brought around to it. He started asking for pictures and video chats, things we had not done and that I was not entirely comfortable with but did anyway since he was on the road a lot. He watched dirty videos all the time. I thought we had a good physical life and did not see any deficits. He never voiced any either until the day he suggested we open our marriage. I was devastated. I am by no means a prude but that is one part of our marriage I held as sacred and I thought he did too. I had turned down advances before and fairly recently. Naive or not, I do not think he was having an affair. He really is not a secretive person by nature, that's more me. He really did not see it as cheating as long as we told each other about it. In his words, it's just bonding. The difference in values and devaluation of the sanctity of our marriage shattered me. I did end up having an affair with a very good friend at this time, which my husband knows some about. My husband slept with another woman and told me about it. I felt nothing. What he does not know nor would he understand is the depth that that relationship entailed. We broke it off and in doing that I almost lost my best friend. He has since met a nice woman and they married fairly quickly. It took a long time for my friend and I to be friends again, but we are. It goes against all the playbooks but we manage. We all get together with other friends a couple times a month. It started almost two years ago. Almost a year ago, I lost my father and we moved my mother to an apartment on our property. I never thought my father would die first and my mother is exceedingly needy, always has been. Nothing new, to the point of faking illnesses for attention. My husband was great in the immediate aftermath and about mother being here, I am the one who actually does not want her here, however, ultimately, my husband cannot be emotional support for me. I am an exceedingly private person and don't like to show any weakness. In the times, I have to him, it has either been told to someone else or later used against me somehow. It's almost like he can sense when I am weak or having a hard day and that's when he chooses to come at me with something he knows will upset me or don't feel like talking about. I started seeing a counselor after the affair and have owned my part in all of it. He pays at lip service but I do not think he truly believes he did or does anything wrong. He is not abusive and he works hard for us and I am by no means perfect. I can be difficult to love. I do believe he loves me the best way he knows how and wants to be the person I need him to be but he just does not have the emotional maturity to do it he is incapable and unwilling to examine his own behavior. When I call him on something, I can see the words I don't do that forming on his lip before I even finish the sentence. It is so frustrating because I know he wants to be what I need and I know he won't be. I have to stop myself from using him as a sounding board or showing any vulnerability because I just cannot stand the thought of being disappointed again. As much as I know he loves me and truly believes he does, I sometimes wonder if I'm another addiction. I think the emotional gap has been there a while but in the process of building a life and having kids and running a business, I just didn't see it. Over time, my affair friend became that emotional support and while we are still friends, we cannot talk and text like we used to because we want his marriage and, maybe, mine to have a chance. I want to respect the union. I know there are probably some grief issues, maybe even depression. I know for a fact there is anger about the death and resentment toward my husband for being part of the reason I no longer have the emotional support I need. His actions help take it away and he's not enough to replace it. I know full well I was having an emotional affair long before I was having a physical one. Now it is spilling over into our physical life. I have no desire toward him at all, even when things are going well. I pretend and I go along. I hate the way he kisses me and touches me. I just pray for it to be over quickly. I have had to put a moratorium on him watching videos, again, because it would take forever and I just could not take that. I know he still watches it some. I used to love bonding now I have to fight back tears and nausea. I just go along to get along. Trying to explain some things to him gets nowhere. He cannot fathom it. I don't want to crush him. He does a lot of good. I am at the point where I try to look at the positives and be thankful for what he can do for me instead of what he cannot, but I am struggling. From the outside, I have everything a woman should want, but some days I am beyond miserable. I guess I'm lost. Nothing should be off the table as a conversation. I went along with it against my instincts and that's entirely on me. I had the option to say no. I had fallen into the habit of trying to make him happy. He thought it would just be a fun little lark and for him I guess it could be. For me, not so much. I do go to I see and it does help. And no, he does not understand how much it devastated me. He tried to me think, but it just doesn't make sense to him. He told me he just does not see how that should matter so much as long as we love each other and communicate it to each other. I know there was ever a conscious malicious intent on his part, just hey I'd like to this and I think it would be fun. 
In fact, my counselor pointed out that that is probably one of my biggest hang-ups, the stark difference in how we each saw that part of our marriage when I thought we both saw it the same way. Add to that that I went against my values by participating and it's a total crap show. I should have walked away. I do have a lot of anger and resentment toward my husband that I do not know how to let go of. If at any point, in any of the conversations we've had about all of this, he had looked at me and said I am sorry for what this had done to you, I never set out to hurt you this way, it would make a world of difference. He has never done that. I have asked him to but for him that would be a lie. He simply does not see anything wrong with any of it. Does not make him an evil person, that's just what he believes. That is what I am left to try to reconcile, and now to decide if I even can. I accept a lot of the blame for where we are, a big majority of it actually, but I cannot and do not deserve to shoulder it all. My husband travels a couple weeks a month several months out of the year. I do not like the man he works with because he is toxic. He is a narcissist with a god complex. My husband is a follower who rarely sees any wrong in his, or this guy's, actions. He continues to work with him because it is the best financial opportunity for our family and quite frankly, my husband has never stuck with a job this long in the two decades I've known him and I think he needs to stick with something. But I can tell he's getting the itch to quit it and that factors in later. This is also the man who convinced my husband that an open marriage would be a good idea. He and his wife have one and some of their rules include that you don't spend the night, important later, no emotional attachment, total BS, and tell the other what you are doing. The aftermath of that and my own actions stemming from it almost ended my marriage. For the last two years, we have worked to repair it. I have had to work extremely hard at letting a lot of things go and trying to repair my desire for my husband. I thought headway was being made, but now I'm not so sure. Part 2, my Sil got caught having an affair with a married man while she was also married. I saw it coming but no one would listen to me so I was the least surprised person in the room when it came out. She has never stepped out of the lines before so it was quite the shocker to most people, but I understood how she got there, and I defended her. Everyone makes a mistake now and then. I had numerous conversations with her on what happened in her own self-worth and learning to value herself, recommended a counselor and all that. Now, where these intersect, she is sleeping with the co-worker which is morally wrong by my beliefs but apparently not my husband's, which is an all altogether different issue that I work to deal with constantly. None of them think there is anything wrong because he and the wife have an agreement. Really though, my moral objection doesn't matter for the sake of this problem. They are violating the so-called terms of the open marriage. Over the course of the last year, they have become very close, texting multiple times a day. This I have witnessed with my own eyes. Events to her about his wife who is a bit mentally unstable, a condition I think he prefers because it keeps him in control of her. They are very, very much in the throes of an emotional affair and I speak from hard experience. I have tried to explain this to my husband and he does not think there's anything to it. He worships the ground both of these people walk on whether he is willing to admit it or not. They are also taking steps to hide their interactions from the wife, going so far as for Sil to come to the job site after we told her that would not be a good idea because the people they work for would fire them for that kind of behavior, they are at will employees so there would be no legal recourse. Then they took steps to hide it. It's awful hard to hide stuff from me. I've done it all and frankly, they are just not good at sneaky. I asked my husband to speak to them about it and the fact that his partner spends too much time on the phone during work hours. He refuses saying they are not going to stop just because he says so. My take is they are both being incredibly disrespectful to him. I see it playing out one of two ways. One, they get caught at the workplace or two, the wife finally wises up to what is actually going on and demands he take another job. Either way ends with my husband unemployed because what they do is a team venture. My husband gets angry at me for bringing it up. I cannot understand why he refuses to take a stand with these two other than the obvious hero worship. Even if the standing up caused then to part ways, at least then he would be losing the job because he stood up for his family instead of letting the actions of others affect his family's livelihood. Granted, my kids wouldn't starve. I can support us, but why should I have to over something that could be prevented? Why should they or I have to deal with hardship because someone else can't keep it in their pants and my husband kisses the ground they walk on? Why can my husband not stand up and be the man his family needs him to be, the man he claims he wants to be? I have taken a big step back in our relationship because he wanted to basically be the man of the house. This is not being a man in my estimation. A man fights for his family. I would go to the mat for my children, burn it to the ground, then have a hot bath and nice Chianti and not lose a minute's sleep. He is in effect, choosing this man and his sister over his wife and children by refusing to even have the conversation, even ask the guy to stay off the damn phone more. If they did not listen or take his concerns into account, and they probably would not, then so be it. At least he would know where he stands and would have made the effort for his family. That's really all I am asking. I don't know how to proceed. I am so tired of trying to boost these people up. I know leaving would be the easy part and maybe I should have done it a long time ago, but even if I did, we still have children and this is not what I want them to learn. I also know I cannot force a change in anyone, especially not my husband. 
I do not know how to help him see the situation for what it is. I'm at the point where I'm just ready to go scorched earth and out them all. Asking nicely is getting me nowhere. I keep trying so hard to work through all of this when conventional wisdom says I should have cut bait a long time ago. It's difficult to walk away from so much history and effort. He is not a bad man and I know he truly wants to be a good husband and father but I don't think he can figure out how. He loves me the best way he knows how. I am out of ideas on helping with that. All that is left for me is finalizing the exit strategy. The latest issue has been my husband's lack of leadership for our family, as I perceive it anyway. Namely, not being willing to stand up to behaviors in his workplace that could affect his employment because he doesn't like conflict. It is really just the culmination of a pattern of behavior that started with financial troubles then is asking for an open relationship and me subsequently having an affair with a close friend. Plenty of blame to go around. No excuses. Anyway, in a discussion recently about how we got to this point, I directly asked why he proposed the open marriage. I knew his work partner had a lot to do with it because he has one. He uses to justify a long series of affairs. Turns out, my husband assumed that since he was gone a lot, I was already having an affair and he figured if he gave me permission, I would stay with him. Add to that the work friend pouring the other poison in his ear and, Viola, mutually assured destruction. Irony is, I wasn't at the time. Had, in fact, actively turned the opportunity down. That all changed in the aftermath. Again, my choices, not blaming him. I'm a grown-up and can accept the consequences. Worse, when he said this, I had no reaction whatsoever. I guess that is when I finally accepted what I had known for months now in regard to my relationship. Two months later, this came from a conversation had with an older friend a few months after his wife passed. She had been ill for a long time and he was faithful but had now become interested in a lady at church. He was wondering how long was appropriate to wait. He was expressing how different it is moving forward after a death as opposed to divorce in the case of his first marriage. That led into the differences in the genders and how they process losses of both kinds. I could definitely see his desire to move forward with his life. He had dealt with extended debilitating illness for a long time. In a lot of ways, parts of his marriage had ended long ago. The need for companionship is a real thing. Compare that to my mother who lost my father almost two years ago and will barely get out of bed even now in spite of extensive counseling. Losing a spouse by divorce, of course, is a different loss. I've seen a lot of men move on very quickly. My cousin ended an intense four-year live-in relationship then married a woman he had known six months. Not sure how well that bodes for that union, but we will see. Several men I know have entered into relatively serious exclusive type relationships, moving in together, shortly after while most of my female friends stay single or have been single a while. Obviously, there are exceptions to this. I know that personally, I have no interest in dating right now, especially since it's not final yet. I can see a day where I might want a committed companion, but I do not think I will feel the need to cohabitate or get married. Just don't think I would feel it necessary at this point in my life. I can see my ex being the complete opposite. Two months later, the end. I've realized how exhausting it was. There were great times no doubt and I treasure those, and this has certainly been no cake walk, but I spent the last half of my marriage without much emotional support from my spouse. I had to outlet for vulnerability. I still don't really, but that's okay because I no longer expect it. Bottom line, he just wasn't equipped to provide it. Didn't make him evil, just not able. I compensated. I sought it in other ways. I didn't realize it wasn't there until all that was snatched away. Even then, I tried to make excuses and just keep my own counsel. There was such a difference in type of maturity. Neither one of us better than the other, simply no longer suited. As I watched him lose his temper after our son's birthday party last weekend over something incredibly minor, not a violent man, a tantrum, it became so much more glaringly obvious. We do not process things similarly at all. I knew it was right to end it. I found myself realizing how much easier it is to be alone. I've been alone for years but to the whole world it looked like I had the perfect support system. It took so much effort to put on that facade. Heck, I even put it on for him. Sharing just enough so he thought he was in while keeping a stone wall around the most important parts of me because I knew the damage that could be done. It was a heck of a tiresome dance. I imagine it's a fairly common sentiment when you stop and look at it. Sometimes you can be your most lonely right next to someone else. By comment, it hurts more when you have someone right there that you love and nothing is done. It's best to be alone if that's the case. At least I know not to expect help, affection, and love from someone who isn't there because it's just me.